All right. It looks like everyone's settled in. Good evening. I'm Stuart. Thank you so much, Joe, for that introduction. Um, I am going to walk us through the SHSAT. I'm going to let you know about the content of the test, uh, the structure of the test, the cutoff scores and what they mean, and um, some ways to go about dealing with it all. I am going to share with you uh, my little PowerPoint. Uh, you could read it as we go along. I'll cover most of it. Uh, if you have questions, like Joe said, just throw them into the chat, and I'll try to get to them uh, either during the chat or at the end. Uh, I'll take all questions. So I'm just going to share this. And there we go. Um, you all probably know what the SHSAT is. You probably had many, um, and my radiator here is going crazy. So if you hear it, I'm sorry. Um, you've all heard a little about it, a lot about it. You've had kids already do it. This is your first time. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation around. I try to give uh, the clearest information I can so that you're not getting some crazy ideas. Basically, the SHSAT, uh, well, first of all, who are we? We are a bit prep. Uh, we've been in, let me get to go. There we go. We've been around since uh, 2007. We've had offices on the Upper West Side since about 2012. And uh, we offer classes one on one, in person, and remote one on one, uh, small groups in person. We have a small office now. We'll come to your school. Uh, we write our own books. This is our Hunter book, not our SHSAT book, but you get the idea. Um, and we've been doing this for quite some time. I've been tutoring uh, individually since uh, the 20th century, to put it generally. And I um, know kids. And we know kids and we know tests. And we're delighted to walk them through this process every year and, and what to really mature through the process. It's always a question is if the SHSAT is right for you. We don't prey on people's anxieties, but if ever it was a good time to take the SHSAT, even if it's a remote shot, now is the time to do it because the high school process, as you know, as you're finding out, has become somewhat uh, scattered. There's no clear way to know what high school you're gonna get unless you take the SHSAT because the SHSAT will, you know, have give you some clarity. If you get a score, you get into that school. You will achieve your goals and you have some control over the situation. Um, it's a hard test, uh, but it's one worth taking. Um, as I said, because you get to control somewhat your student, your student gets to control his or her future. There are um, nine, uh, no, wait a minute, there are, oh, how many? There are eight, nine SH specialized high schools, eight of which take the, um, take the SHSAT. Uh, LaGuardia has its own performative aspect. You have to try out, you have to show a, um, Resume, uh, portfolio, depending on what skill you were proposing to enter in. And of course, you have to have good grades. So that's another specialized high school. So theoretically, you can get into three high schools. You can get into uh, a normal uh, pu pu public high school that you're not zoned for, but that you get placed into based on a list. You can and your grades. And you can get into a specialized high school by taking this test and you can sing and dance and do tech or art and get into um, LaGuardia, perhaps. Um, so how do you know if it's the right test for you? We are happy, delighted. Uh, one tiny little benefit of the pandemic is we really stepped up our game online. You can take, uh, you can sign up for free for a remote diagnostic. Thanks to Joe, uh, he'll get you set up and uh, you take the test. Hit submit for your answers. You find out your score instantly. We see your score instantly and we talk about it. We let you know if it's a possibility, if it's in the realm of possibility, if it's right for you. Um, if you get your students to do that, it's a huge step right there. This is three hours and it's no one's idea of fun. 
Um, so as I said, why should you take it? Because it's worth that shot. It gives you that certain level of guarantee that um, you're going to get X, Y, or Z school. If you've been practicing, if your practice tests are within a certain range, you have some control of the process. It's only three hours. If you don't prep, you just go in, you take the test, you take a shot. It's three hours. It's a morning. Um, and it's free. You should be able to sign up and take it at your school now, which makes it even more convenient than ever. Why should you not take it? If your student is, is miserable, if it's torture, if they're not doing very well, um, we're happy to help them. Uh, we could work with them academically, but it should not be a miserable ordeal for anybody. We're not in the business of torturing kids. Other companies, when I see the number of hours they give kids and what they make kids do, successful or not, they're your torture. They're your torture chamber. So what else? I'm not good at this. There we go. So what is the SHSAT? Good question. The SHSAT is a three-hour test. It is broken into two sections. There's a verbal section and a math section. Everybody gets kind of confused about this. You spend as much time on you want as you want on either section. If you're a math whiz, and maybe the math will take you an hour, you want to spend two hours on verb. Maybe you're 50-50, like most. But if you need to go five minutes over on one one day, that's okay. Um, it's a big, big uh, issue, and we'll deal with that shortly, talking about kids in time, and parents sometimes in time. It's a very complex issue, getting them to organize their time, I'm sure you know, and getting them to feel comfortable using their time properly. So the verbal is broken into two main things, revising and editing, also known as grammar and editing, um, but you can't say grammar anymore. Um, and then reading comprehension, which is the main part of it. The revising and editing is like maybe 10 to 15 now I've seen occasionally questions. And the rest, there's 57 questions in each section, by the way. Why 57? Because seven of them are experimental questions or field questions. You won't know what they are. We won't know what they are. They don't count towards your test. Your test is really counted out of 50, but they need kids to experiment on these questions so they can use them for next test. Um, so about 15 of the 57 are revising and editing, 10 to 15. The rest, about 40 or so questions are reading comprehension. Uh, and reading comprehension of nonfiction, nonfiction of charts and graphs, fiction and poetry. And one thing we've learned in our many years doing this is students in this age are at that very interesting point in their lives where they're going from the very concrete, literal minded child's brain to a more abstract thinking adult brain. So things like algebra, which is more abstract, and poetry, which is more abstract, are a real test of their nascent maturity. So getting them over the hump in those two areas, especially, can be very, very challenging, but also very rewarding if we get them over the hump. Um, but back to the reading comprehension, yes, poetry, yes, fiction, and yes, some really good nonfiction. But not quite like the state test. It's at a different level. So if you have a smart kid and they just kind of phoned it in on the state tests and they're used to doing it that way, they may have to uh, have a bit of an awakening on this test. The math, which everybody kind of fixates on, which is exactly half of the test, um, is really about algebra and geometry. And everybody fixates on that because those are the higher topics. But if you don't have a handle on the foundational math operations, if you don't know what your what your jargon is, if you don't know what an integer is, if your basic number theory is not there, then the rest of it will not be there. So in seventh grade, they give kids a calculator and everybody proceeds to forget, not everyone, but a lot of students forget their multiplication tables and they absolutely abandon long division. And then for the SHSAT, we give back their calculator. We take away their calculators and we tell them you better be able to do your long division 
multiplying, handle decimals, and do all that. So we spend a lot of time making sure that the foundations are strong, because otherwise you're building on a house of sand. And then, yes, we give them the algebra and the word problems and the geometry. It's all going to be there. But every year I get a call after the first class, you didn't teach them geometry. Um, and we're not going to, till we make sure everything else is there. As I mentioned before, timing is the biggest issue for so many students because they're crazy kids and their idea of time is, is warped by school uh, and also by the fact that this is a scaled test and not a 100% test. Um, in school, a lot of your high achieving students are used to getting hundreds. Um, my students, my kids went to Booker T and at Booker T, you can be an honor roll, you could be in high honor roll. So there were kids busting out 99s and the hundreds. Um, so sometimes those kids come to this test and they're, they get a problem that they can't do and they think that's the end of the world. But the fact is that nobody gets a hundred on this test. I've never seen it. Um, uh, 88, 87% will get you into Stuyvesant, roughly. It's based on the curve and how you do on each section, and we'll go into that more. But the point is, start now imploring your kids to allow themselves the time to think when they need to think. There are a lot of questions we can just do on the fly, and we're used to that. But when we have to stop and think, some kids panic. Or some kids, on the other hand, also obsess on a question that they're never going to get, and then they waste time. So we really have to find a way to get them uh, to the middle. And the thing we do is stress to them that you don't need to finish. It's as that last line that I say here, let me annotate, I love my annotator. You don't need to finish everything. You just need to get as many correct as you can. Let me underline that there, oh, didn't get it. So yes, we try to, impress upon that, and it seems very logical, but it doesn't quite always hit their brain pans, that you don't get points for finishing, you only get points for getting questions right. So before you say goodnight to your kids tonight, tell them that now. Oops. Now, let's jump ahead. You have prepped your kid however you wanted to. They've practiced, they're ready to go, they're taking a test, they get a ticket, they bring it to school, they fill it out, whatever. How do you pick your schools? And again, everybody hears X, Y, and Z, and I'll get all kinds of crazy questions and people won't believe me. It's okay. You pick the school you want first. That's it. If you think in a dream, your kids have been scoring way below Stuyvesant, but they love Stuyvesant, maybe they'll have a good day. They put down Stuyvesant first. Great. They don't get Stuyvesant. The algorithm looks at their second score. They clear that class, they get that class. Never put Stuyvesant second if you have any dream of second, because if you get the score that's good enough for Stuyvesant, you're going to get the score that's good enough for whatever you put ahead of it. So just rank your schools by preference, preference only, your dream. And that's it. Don't worry about anything else. And put down as many as you could reasonably go to, okay? I don't know how many people can make it out to Staten Island, so maybe you won't put Staten Island down. But otherwise, put them all out there because you want to have that option. You want to go somewhere in case the, the, the regular ed high school you get is not anything you want to go to. You want to have this option. That's why we're doing this. Now we get to the SHSAT scoring, which is really kind of cool. Um, it's out of 400 for each section. And it's, it's a curve. And it curves exponentially higher as you get closer to being perfect. It doesn't mean that the 50th question is worth more than the 49th, but it means the 50th correct question is worth a lot more than the 49th. If you're perfect in a section, you get 400. If you get one wrong, you maybe get 350. After that, it starts, each question starts being worth maybe 20 and then 10, and then sometimes nothing extra. So it's really uh, 
a dramatic curve. I'm going to use my annotator again. I'm excited. It's like this. And then whoop, way up. Look at that. Right up to perfect, which is 400. So that's per section. All right. So what do we do? Most tests, most schooling, you're looking for balance. If you take the SAT, you want a good score in both sections. So your overall score is great. On the SHSAT, we want that too. But we want to make good kids in a section great. And if they're okay in another section, just a little better, because it's better to be close to perfect in one and okay in the other than so-so in both. So it's very important if you're strong in one, don't fixate on where you're weak, which is classic for kids, sometimes classic for parents to focus, oh, but he's getting eight, he's getting 400 on the verbal, but he, has, he doesn't know the geometry. Don't worry about that. Um, of course, we'll deal with it, but we want to focus on the bagel and not on the whole. We want to make the best out of what we've got. And so here's your cutoffs. So the test is out of 800. But as you see here, just getting a 561, in this case, gets you into Stuyvesant. Down here at the bottom, something around 500 will get you into one of the Brooklyn schools, which are terrific schools. And then there's everything in between. Uh, Lehman, HSMSC, Bronx Science, those are three terrific high schools as well um, that you've all probably heard of. I absolutely recommend you visit them if you can. Certainly look at their websites, talk to anyone you know who's gone there, um, and make a wish list. Get to know these schools as best you can and create goals. And then what are you going to do? What are you going to do then? You take a free practice test. You take a free practice test. You request a test. Go to our website. Um, maybe we'll show you at the end, Joe. We'll pop that up on the screen and show them. Uh, it's very easy. Request a test. You register. It's free. Uh and you can take the test, you can print out the test itself, but you just have to submit the questions online. We have timers. If you screw up, you can retake the test. We try to make it as easy as possible because I know it's a lot. It's a lot to ask a 12 slash 13 year old kid to take a practice test. So we want it to be as easy and bug free as possible. Plus, we don't want Joe, you know, staying up late fixing these things. Um, and then you're welcome to request a free consult with me. Even if your student hasn't taken the test, hit the button, request a consult. I got a Calendly. I'm very, very, very high tech now. So feel free to hop onto that and we'll talk and we'll help you make a plan. Um, everything else, all our information is online on our fabulous website. Uh, we give winter, spring and fall classes uh monday wednesdays or fridays in the office uh we have in-office testing in the fall we have giant cafeteria-wide uh testing that really turns your neophytes into seasoned test-taking veterans and it'll give them a jump up on any standardized test after this nothing will phase them after this um we also of course offer one-on-one -on -one in person in your office or in uh, your home, our office, your home, uh, to your schedule. Uh, we can do remote tutoring. It's a little less expensive and you can start anytime. And that's of course, to your schedule. If you have a school, uh, I know a number of you are from SOC. We're going to be working with SOC this year. If your school is interested, if you haven't, you know, signed up with another vendor already, or you're tired of your current vendor, happy to set you up, happy to give huge, violent, obscene discounts to your school. So um, hop on and certainly take advantage of our free services. And most of all, remember to remain clam, remain clam. That means keep your head about you because when you don't, the adrenaline flows and anxiety flows, up becomes down, left becomes right, X becomes Y, area becomes perimeter and calm becomes clam. That's definitely what we're about. Um, 
if uh, Joe, do you want to do, you want to walk them through the website just a tiny bit and I'll read the questions while you do that? Sure, no problem. Thanks. A Starting lot. from the homepage here, we have pretty much everything that you need here. Our free test is right, right here. Free consultation with stewards right here. Um, we have the Crest free test button is also here. Um, we have our services page, which is basically the entire portfolio of what IVID can offer all in one place. Um, it lists our classes that are coming, different practice tests, purchasing options. The diagnostic, again, is right here as well. Um, all of our one-on-one -on -one tutoring packages and all of the textbooks that Stuart referenced earlier, the Remain Clam series basically covers every major test uh, that is currently being utilized. And there's also a custom group option where you have multiple students that may not be large enough for a class amount, but maybe two students, um, you know, wanting to get some tutoring together. Um, so we have a beautiful student portal that you can access um, when you have registered with us. And this is how you take the tests and access all of your materials when you are working with us. Um, to access that, it's there's a button up on the right-hand corner right here. And then there is also a link at the bottom of the page right here uh, that says student portal. So if I go into the student portal here, I have a, a student account that I use to do testing. Um, we would log into this account and it brings us to the homepage of our portal. And what we have in here is we have our test and book practice center, which is where you would take your online tests and you also have access to our interactive textbooks. If you either purchase one or are in one of our classes or one of our students, um, you can go through the textbook and go and do all of the uh, practice problems that are within the textbook. Um, our shared files and test reports section is where all of the shared files are and all of your test reports would be. So upon completing a test, uh, or if you wanna download a PDF of one of our tests and print it out, you go into this section. And then the library section basically is just a big uh, area where you can access a lot of our files that are fairly general, but certain things, um, you know, depending on what uh, subject you're doing, uh, you would have access to. And then we have a teacher section where you view your teachers if you were uh, assigned a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with one of our tutors or through a class, um, you can view it there. And then there's a view my product section, which goes into a little bit more detail about uh, your purchases and you're able to schedule um, your in-person proctor tests uh, through your products if you purchase proctor tests, um, things like that. Um, and just to give you a quick rundown of how the uh, tests work, I'm going to go into the uh, test center here, and you'll see that there are several SHSAT tests that I have here sitting. Um, so you'll see, again, you have this option to download a printable version. And as Stuart referenced in his presentation, there are three different testing timing options. Students that have accommodations get 270 minutes. The regular test timing is 180 minutes. So we offer both options and we also offer an option to take the test without the timer. Um, another great feature of our test center is that you don't have to complete the entire test to get scores from certain questions. Um, you could go in and answer four or five questions. You can do one you know, one of the sections separately um, and just get uh, an answers from that. Um, so you have pretty much, go ahead. Do you want to just, just show them what it looks like when they start it? Sure. And never be afraid to start it because you can always restart. That's true. Okay. So this is what our SHSAT diagnostic looks like. So we have an interactive PDF here uh, that you are able to go through as you go through the test. And you have your answer sheet on the right hand side. And as you go through, you would answer the questions and kind of continue on and keep going through the PDF as you keep answering questions. And I will skip ahead to show you some of the uh, fill in answers because for the math section, there are uh, grid in questions. And so when we get to questions 58 through 62, 
um, you would just type in your answer, um, you know, based on what the grid in would be. Um, so upon completing uh, however many questions um, or all of them as you would do, you would scroll down to the bottom and you would hit this finish and submit button and you would submit the test. And then you would go back to your portal home and you'd go to your shared files and test reports area and you would be able to see I didn't do very well on that most recent test, um, but it's you would have all of your results right in here to be accessed and or downloaded at any time. Will you show them the report, what it looks like? Oh, good. Sure. I'll put on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you my SHSAT05, which I did a lot better on. Um, so I actually will download it so it's easier to see. Um, so we have your uh, scores for the total. Um, your verbal score and the math score. Um, and there is also a, a brief summary about the test itself, uh, covering some of the stuff that Stuart covered. Um, and then you end up getting a very thorough uh, results sheet of all the correct and incorrect answers, um, the scale. And as you go, you can see which correct, which answers were correct, which ones were incorrect, um, very visible, very easy to see. Um, and then as you go through the rest of the report, you get a breakdown of either if you do an in-person test, you get an example here of a student who filled out the bubble sheet. And then you get a complete breakdown of every single type of question there is within the test and which ones were correct, which ones were incorrect. And it continues to go through each section. So you can see all the different areas and it gives us a very good picture of strengths and weaknesses uh, you know, of each student and where um, our resources need to be focused. That was terrific, Joe. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, I saw one question uh, trying to the differentiate question uh, specifically about Tutorverse. Um, I always tell people I spend most of my time improving my company and I'm not that interested uh, in other companies, but I only by hearsay or, you know, what I see of their pricing, we are much less expensive than Tutorverse. Um, I know uh, pretty good things about them. Their materials are, are, are you know, fine, uh, good test taking materials. I don't know about the instructional stuff, but their tests are good. Um, I've heard some of their classes are, are well done. Uh, I think they have two teachers per class, but they have much bigger classes than we do. And I know they're much more expensive than we are, much more expensive. Um, they'll also do some of those classes very early in the year. I mean, we're starting early too, but even earlier and even longer, um, we prefer to go for um, quality and process over quantity because I think there's diminishing returns, especially with our younger students. Um, so we try to you know, really find the sweet spot in terms of how much time we give kids. Um, and I don't know who runs Tutorverse. I know who runs Ibid Prep. Uh, and I'm here. I'm behind everything we do. I'm not a micromanager, right, Joe? Just sort of. No. Just a manager. A manager. Um, and I, I try, I'm here to answer your questions. My tutors are available to answer your questions. Um, so I think we give a very personalized touch. And we also work from my book, which is, uh, I think, unique in that it addresses uh, more than just the nuts and bolts of the test, but the way students think. Um, most of, um, ever since Princeton Review came along and told parents and teachers and students that, you know, test taking, it's all about tricks and, uh, you know, you can prep for the test. And it, you know, to some effect, it, it was very effective, but it also created a victim mentality. Um, but in essence, in reality, the tricks on a test are really just playing on uh, students' weaknesses, uh, you know, things they're going to do that might be counterintuitive, their problems with time. Um, and so learning their own minds and where they're falling short and why they're falling for these tricks uh, is more productive in my mind, in my soul, and I've committed my life to this, uh, than turning them into victims who are being tricked by a test. Really, it's about learning, you know, your mistakes and why you make them so you stop making them.
Um, so I hope that answered that question. Um, how close is the practice test to the real test? Easier, harder? We use real tests. We use release DOE tests. So don't be giving your students 90 million tests. We'll control them so you can see the results and we can see the results and they're not doing half a test one day and then you come to us in the fall and they're out of tests. Uh, so for the most part, we use real tests. Um, we've we've doctored a few of the older tests that, that were before they changed the structure to make them conform to the new structure. So some of the material is ours. Some tests are harder than others, but it's not been a uh, straight progression anyway. Some years, the real SHSAT is harder than other years. Um, we have been noticing the past few years that the verbal has been getting harder. I have various theories for that, but let's just say that's where things have been getting a little different over the years. Um, but the practice tests we give are a very good indicator of where your student will be as they learn to take them. Um, if anyone wants to hop on the mic and ask any other questions, I would be delighted to answer them because I don't mind talking. I got one more here, Stu. So um, one of the questions was, is the tutoring online? The class, all our classes are in person. Um, our one-on-one -on -one tutoring can be uh, by remote, can be by Zoom, or it can be uh, uh, in person. It's up to you. It's what you prefer. Can be in our office, can be in your home. If we have room in the office, it's a small office right now. Um, and we're hoping to also start recording our classes. So if you need to miss a class, uh, or if you just want to do the recorded classes, you can do that. But that's a project that's underway for us in the moment, but for the most part, it's in person or remote, it's up to you. Next question we got is, what is the difference between IBID and footnotes after school? Oh, good question. They're both us. Footnotes after <laughs> school is a uh, not-for-profit organization um, that's uh, slowly getting funding uh, to uh, work with kids one-on-one. -on -one, uh, as um, on a donation basis, uh, you know, give me $5, give me $10, we will help you get through the regions, we'll help you get through um, your school. Uh, and we also offer, you know, some scholarship seats to our classes through footnotes as well. So it's a not-for-profit organization that's a sister company of Vivid Prep. So um, if you need that, if you need us, we're here for you on any level. You just have to get to us and then we'll take care of the rest. All right, next question is, uh, how do you handle kids forgetting everything over the summer? Do you suggest some test prep in the fall? We bang them in the head and we make sure it's in there. No, all of our classes go from the spring and they resume in the fall. Over the summer, we give them an online summer binder. You can print it out. You do whatever you want. It's broken into four weeks of work. You could do it in four weeks. You could do it in eight weeks. You could do it in the last week before school starts. Um, I don't advise that. Uh, but that keeps them working over the summer. We do give them a break over the summer. Although some kids, we also have just plain summer classes. Some kids prefer to prep for the summer. But absolutely, whatever you do, however you plan with Tudorverse, Universe, Whoever, make sure they work in the fall, make sure at least they come take a practice test or two, even if they feel like they're done prepping. You have to get, you know, like any sport, any activity, you, you want to ramp up right before the real thing. Absolutely. Good question. Next question is, what's our success rate? Oh, that's a great question. You know, people self-report. So sometimes... You don't hear from people, you're like, oh my God, they 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 hated us, they did terrible, and then they tell you they're in Stuyvesant when you run into them on the street. So we hear from whoever, you know, we reach out to people, but generally speaking, year to year, and it's varied, it's between 80 and 90%. So we hope uh, we can keep that up. Um, when you take the practice test, uh, we do advise, you'll read on the front cover of your report, you know, within 50 points, we'll get you there, within 100, it's worth a shot, but, you know, there's some heavy lifting involved. And by within 50 or 100, I mean around 500 is where you want to get to so you feel secure you're going to get somewhere. Um, so with that in mind, and that's why we urge the diagnostic, because we don't want, like I said early in the talk, we don't want kids 
taking the test if this is going to be a miserable ordeal for them and they they won't feel any growth or success. Next question is, is the SHSAT test on paper or on the computer? It's on paper still. Um, so when we give you a test, uh, if you come in person, obviously you'll get a test book to do it in person. If you get it and you're doing it uh, online through us, Print it out if you can. So your kids, get, and if they, if you can't print it out, make sure they're just doing their math. Most importantly, the math on paper. Uh, even if it was a remote test, purely remote test, you want to be doing your math with paper. Most kids, especially the boys, they think that it makes them smarter if they do everything in their head. It just makes them more wrong. So get them doing all their work on paper if possible. <laughs> Okay, next question. Do you get a calculator to do the math section? No. I did mention that earlier. In seventh grade, you, they do use calculators in most of their math classes, but not on the SHSAT. So get those flashcards out. Get them long dividing. Let's get the fractions rolled up again because you got to know these things inside and out. Okay. Oh, if anyone else has any other questions, now is the time. Um, oh, hold on. We got another one coming in. Like so that. she might have been a, she might have been a little late. Can you so can you please provide a link to the diagnostic? Yes, we can absolutely do that. That's good. It's in the chat there, right? Oh. It is. I, I can send it again. Do it again, Joe. Do it again. Yep. Okay. We don't mind repeating ourselves. That's kind of the soul of our jobs. Right. Exactly. Again, you know this because you have 12 year old kids repetition and not going insane while you're repeating yourself yes absolutely yes there's the diagnostic there's the link to the consult you could just put the link to the website there um mm -hmm. shoot us an email any email comes to me or comes to joe and we'll 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 answer all your other questions or like you hang up and there's a thought Yep. We'll answer that. And again, as Joe mentioned, we're going to be uh, putting this recording up um, in a few days. Yep, we got one more. Please. Oh, a couple more now. Okay. okay. Um, so first one is, how big are the class sizes that are in person? Great question. Never more than 12. I do believe class size matters. And, you know, occasionally we get like a 13th of a scholarship person and we if it's okay we'll do that but that's that's it that's our limit and we only need four to start correct and if yes in a school we need eight to start for our own classes in our office it's four okay um so next one is what happens if your child doesn't get along with the assigned tutor in a school-based group the school-based group does very little we could do unless we're doing more than one class in that school. Um, we don't try to force anybody to stick around, but we do have some very personable, uh, great tutors who have been with us a long time, and they've, they're with us because they have a tremendous uh, rapport with students, so that rarely happens. If you're with a student one-on-one, -on -one, a, a tutor one-on-one, -on -one, and the dynamic it just isn't right, we just we just change it right away. But for teachers, as you can imagine, if you've scheduled a class and there's only one class in the school, for example, or uh, it, it's hard, it's hard. But we try to accommodate, but, you know, there's a limit to the magic we can perform. Uh, question, how do we request a school-based class? Uh, well, first, does your school have anybody? Because we've people have requested it, and then I find out they already have somebody. So that's you know a little problematic. Um, the second is uh, talk to your parent coordinator or your PTA. Uh, connect me to them. I'm happy to reach out to them. Uh, you know, if your school is interested in doing that, um, we are certainly delighted to do that. And again, through footnotes, we can offer scholarships as needed. Um, we do offer reduced rates, as I mentioned, uh, based somewhat on the free lunch percentage of your school. Um, so they could be a really good nominal rate. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to work with really any schools. We've worked with over a dozen schools throughout the city uh, in our years. And it's a challenge, um, depending on the school, depending on the the, the vibe there. But we, we, we make it work. So it looks like those questions were from people from Booker T. Okay. Um, that could, that 
I know they have uh, challenges there. So um, bringing anybody into the school, um, we did a, a free test there through footnotes um, in the fall, and we might be able to do it through footnotes. I would go, I would work with Ann Payovich there. I would speak to her uh, and or Jill Bennett and see if um, there's anything possible. But I know it can be a little uh, uh, tricky um, politically for Booker T. But I would reach out to to them and maybe to your PTA there as well. Uh, we have a great relationship with that school. And if there's any wiggle room, we will wiggle into that school. Okay, we got a follow up from the question before about um, a mismatch maybe with a tutor yeah. um, for a student um, and basically just about um, you know refundable options if that did end up happening. Well, they're going, you're really going, you, you're in the class already and you're hating the teacher. Um, I, <laughs> um, we have a very short roster of, of tutors, not because we don't have people who want to work with us, but because we don't want everyone to work with us. And most of our tutors have been with us four, five, six years. Um, so they're very good. Uh, so we don't list everyone who's ever worked with us. The people on our about us page and you can look them up those are the people who are working with us and they're terrific so we go to all this effort to get you a class to get you into the class there are no refunds once a class starts so if you're starting it with your foot halfway out the door maybe it's not right for you but i can guarantee you that our classes are strong and and really good and your kid will find their way in our class Okay, next question. Are tutors available for questions in between class sessions? Absolutely. Always through email. Just uh, when we start our class, we send out a welcome letter, which everyone loses, but it has their email on it. Um, it you'll, and you can reach out to them uh, anytime through their emails. And if, you know, there's spam or it doesn't go through to their emails and, and they're not responding, reach out to me. I'll get a hold of them. Well, terrific. Thank you, everyone, for hopping on. I, I had a great time. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed myself. I love giving talks. I love hearing myself talk. So if you want to talk more, uh, sign up for a Calendly a meeting or a Zoom uh, or shoot me an email and I'll answer any questions you think of after tonight. Thank you, everyone.